Let's now look at the parametric equations of the line that would be in three dimensions. So again, pardon the flat paper. So there's a line. So if I had it tilted off the paper somehow, we could imagine that would be a line in not just two dimensions, but it goes right, it goes this way, and it goes this way also. Three dimensions. The equation's rather simple. It looks nearly identical to the set of equations in two dimensions. Uh, sometimes the textbook writes them just left to right with a comma separating them. I do not like to do that. I want you to see clearly that there is a parameter, a fourth variable, x, y, z, and for those of you that like science fiction, maybe time is the fourth dimension in this case. What is a better description is it tells you what happens to x over a period of time and what happens to y and z over a period of time. And then this would be basically a vector. You know, our direction, which is a vector in this case, is delta x and delta y and delta z. Not quite my neatest writing, that's for certain. So a quick little example, if I were to write these three equations, let's do it so it all fits, there we go. X equals, Y equals, Z equals. And we were to, let's say, um, look at 10 plus 4T. And let's call this five minus T, and we'll call this negative two plus three T. Because I'm on flat paper here and you're gonna be submitting work on flat paper, um, I don't need you to sketch this graph, but I do want to talk about what the visual looks like. We'll have, we'll call our starting point our initial point, but it's probably better to call it its given point, but you're gonna find that often this given point and this start point are one and the same. So our starting point is the coordinates 10, five, and negative two. We've done enough, a little bit of uh, graphing to start to know that it's not super simple to graph that. Um, if I were to attempt to do that, it probably wouldn't look very good, Z. And X and Y. So you'd go 10 units this way, and you'd go five units that way, and then you'd have to go two units down. And my sketching abilities, well, they're sketchy. Pardon the humor, they're sketchy, my abilities. That'd be our starting point. And then from that point, our direction that we'd be going is the direction where it is four units in the positive x direction. That'd be this way. Negative one unit in the y direction. That would be that way. And a positive three units or in the above in the z direction. So the line would be going, see, four lines would be kind of going that way. If you were sitting here with me, right at my paper, and I held my pen the correct way, you might almost believe that. But it might take a little bit of extra imagination to do better than that now. So, since I'm not going to make you graph it on an assignment or an assessment, um, we're mostly just holding on to this knowledge for some other pieces that are to come, some of them very soon. Let's look at another sample. Let's write the parametric equations of the line that go through this point, 2, 9, 0, that is parallel to the z-axis. So 
I actually think I could sort of sketch this point for your imaginations. Z, X, and Y. So two in the X direction, nine in the Y direction, and don't go in the Z direction. So it'd be that point right there. So think of it as a point on the ground. And I want to write the equation of the line that is parallel to the z-axis. So in other words, it comes straight off the paper, just like the z-axis would. So the great thing about some types of mathy kind of problems is we frequently can contribute to our final answer without really having processed the question through all the way yet. So if I, for example, know that this is my starting point, x0, y0, and z0, well, I'm just going <laughs> to 2, 9, 0. Now, I know my algebra teachers told me I don't have to write a 0 there, but I want to remind you 0 is a real number. It's okay to write it. Um, check your wallet. Zero is frequently real in your wallet in terms of how much money you have there, huh? Isn't it? So I'm writing the zero so for sake of the solution, you can see it through. Now, parallel to the z-axis. That means I want it to go straight off the paper. I don't want it to bend this way. And I don't want it to bend this way. I only want it to go straight off the paper. So I literally am going to just point out that if it's parallel to the z-axis, the x shouldn't change and the y shouldn't change. Only the z should change. So I'm once again, here I go. I'm going to write my zeros. So you know that they're there. If you're a computer science person, you put the zero in the cell. You need to have a, that starting point. The, the cell's gonna have a zero recorded in there. Now, parallel to the z-axis. Since I didn't specify a magnitude of the vector, I could put any number I wanted here as long as it's not zero. It has to go in the z direction. The easiest thing to do would be to maybe to put a one there. Um, delta Z could easily be 1, but if you wrote it as 2 or negative uh, you know, 8, those would be okay also. As long as it was in the direction of Z, it would be correct. It would be correct. So for this problem, I could leave my solution this way, or I could simplify my three equations. When you look at a solution manual, they'll frequently just write it in the shortest way possible. I'm not a big fan of that unless you actually understand it. If you have to write it a little bit more detail, then write it with more detail. Give the full statement in there. Now, if you wanted to find other points on this line, um, the X will be two and the Y will be nine, and you could just plug in a value of T if t is 10, then you'd have a point 10 units off the paper. If t is negative 4 and you went back in time somehow, it would be 4 units below the paper. This or this could be your equations. There you go. Three variable equations of a line using a fourth variable as a parameter to control it all. Until next time.